Hi everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about Spark SQL. So, what is Spark SQL? Spark SQL is Spark's module for working with structured data. And one of the major use of Spark SQL is to execute SQL queries using Spark. And Spark can also be used to read data from an existing Hive installation. For using Spark with Hive, I will create another video. So when running SQL from any programming language, the results will be written as a data frame or a data set in Spark SQL. You can also interact with the SQL interface using the command line or JDBC or ODBC. Some of the features of Spark SQL are it is integrated. It means that SQL can be integrated with other Spark programs. So you can write your Spark code and have the data in a data frame and you can create temporary tables using that data frame and query those tables using SQL inside Spark itself and take that result back into your data frame and write it to some file or write it to some location or you can also see what is there in that data and spark sql also provides uniform data access which means you can connect to any data source the same way and there are several ways to interact with spark sql including sql and the dataset api when computing a result the same execution is used independent of which API or which language you are using to express the computation. This unification means that developers can easily switch back and forth between different APIs based on which provides the most natural way to express a given transformation. And it has Hive integration so that we can run SQL or Hive QL queries on the existing Hive warehouses. And it also allows standard connectivity to JDBC or ODBC to any other databases. Now let's see a demo of how we can use SQL queries inside Spark. I created an object named Spark SQL and we need a Spark session to be imported. Now I am creating a main inside the Spark SQL object and inside the main the first step that we need to do is to create a Spark session. And I am naming my Spark session as Spark. We can also mention master to be local. Now the Spark session is available as Spark. I always end my program with Spark dot stop, so that once the execution of any code between those two lines is complete, then Spark session will be stopped. Now we need a data frame to execute any Spark SQL queries. Let me create a data frame named data, and this data frame data has four columns: ID, name, DOB, and age so this 2df is highlighted as red because we need to import spark implicits spark implicits are also used to convert rdds to data frames and it provides most encoders that are needed by spark now we have our data which is our data frame that we are going to use for rest of the session let's print the content of this data using data.show. Now let's execute this Spark SQL object. And we can see that the data is displayed as we have defined in this data frame. So it has four columns ID name, DOB, and age. And this is the data. Now without Spark SQL, the way that interact with this data frame is like if you want to see the schema of this data frame, you can just do data.print schema. So that the schema of this data frame will be printed. Let us also see this. You can see that the schema is printed as ID, which is integer, name, string, date of birth, string, and age is an integer. So this is how we can see this schema of any data frame by using the print schema method in Spark. Let's say if you want to pick up any particular column, like I want I only want to print the name column, you can do that by calling data frame dot select followed by the name of the column and the name of the column is name and I am calling show on top of it. So you can see that only the name column is printed and let's say now we want to print the name column and the age added by one. So name should be Alice and age age should be 21. So let's do that in spark data frame data dot select 
we can do that by using dollar notation dollar notation will allow us to do any operation on top of the column in our case we wanted to add one to this age column so we call this age and plus one sorry i need to include show on top of this to see the results so you can see that alice age is 21 and bob age 27 which is incremented by n by one and let's say you want to do some filter and the filter on age column and the condition is age greater than let's say 22 and see the results let me execute this so you know the final result only has three rows we didn't have alice because alice age is 20 which is less than 22 that's how the data is filtered now let us also apply some aggregate function on top of the data and let's say that we are doing group by on say name we are trying to see the number of people who has the same name so it will group by name and the aggregation operation is count and we do show on top of this you can see that the result has two columns the name and count so name is danny charlie bob and alice and the count of people with this name danny is one charlie is one bob is one and alice is two let's make some change let's try to add one more record with the same name danny the id 16 and date of birth is some change and it's 33 and let's try to execute and now we should see count as two for the name danny because we have two people with the name danny so you can see that the count is two i just added this record to make sure that you understand this group by count and the program is running correctly now what we are going to do is we are going to execute the same queries using spark sql instead of using the data frame functions there are a lot more other functions that we can apply on any data frame and all these functions are available in spark api documentation and i'll attach the link to the spark api documentation in the description of this video please go ahead and have a look let me comment out these lines we don't need them and now we want to run spark sql on top of spark so in the same program on the same data we can run spark sql so in order to run spark sql we need to register this data frame as a sql temporary view so what we do now is we will register this data frame as a sql temporary view in order to do that we can just call data frame dot create or replace temporary view and we need to provide name for this view i am naming it as let's say that people and for executing sql on top of this data frame you can just write spark.sql followed by the the sql query that you are trying to execute and we also need to mention show we can see that the data frame contents are completely displayed and now we displayed this data using spark sql by executing a sql query in spark now let us select only name column from this table by using select name from people Now you can see that only one column name is displayed now let's select name and age plus one from people you can see that one is added to age and we have done all of this by using sql inside spark and the next operation is let's filter out this data 
by doing select star from people where age greater than 22 we can see four records and alice is missing from this data because alice age is less than 22 and we filtered the age to be greater than 22 and now let's do a group by own name we can see that danny has count of two and others has count of one and we did group by using sql inside spark and this is how we are going to execute sql queries inside spark in our case we have created a temporary view but if you have hive warehouse that you want to connect directly you can directly execute sql queries to run in hive as well and same thing can be done using jdbc or odbc connectors and we will see that in upcoming videos now one more thing here is we have created a data frame and created a temporary view and we are using the same spark session to run the sql queries and we are able to see the data now let's try to create a new session and see the same data that can be done using spark dot new session dot sql so it will be a different session and see if we are able to display this data or not we can just run select star from people and no group by nothing is needed and execute we got an error stating that the table or view people cannot be found because this table is created in the first spark session and we are running this sql query in this new session within the same application within this same application so if you want to create a view and query using sql in a different session within the same application then you can create global temp view so that this view will be accessible to the entire application and any session inside that application can run sql queries on top of that view basically any session in that application can access that view for doing that you modify this statement to create or replace global temp view and call it people and now let's try to execute so we are creating creating a global temp view instead of a normal temp view and we are creating a new session in the same application and running our sql query on top of that view again we got an error stating that the table or view people cannot be found the reason being we are directly looking for people this people will be searched within the new session but this people global temp view we created as a global view so which means that in order to access people you need to mention global temp dot name of this view so that this view people will be searched inside the global variables and now let's try to execute this we are now able to see this data using a new session within the same application hope you have understood the difference between temp view and global temp view as well and this is how we are going to run sql queries inside spark i will attach the link to this code block in the description of this video you can go ahead download and practice yourself so that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.